Hello everyone. As part of uh, dealing big data with Hadoop and Spark, we will be learning today about uh, HDFS command line interface and Hadoop interface. Hadoop, uh, it works on three different modes, standalone mode, pseudo distributed mode and fully distributed mode. What is a standalone mode? It is on a single machine, everything will work, but here in the standalone mode, none of the daemons will run, that is no master node, no name node, no data node, no such things. Just what happens is, in this mode, the user can work directly with the system and he will be taking care of the work everything and it works in the fastest mode because standalone, no name node, nothing is there. It happens, it is like a normal single machine on which the user is sitting and working. Coming to the pseudo distributed mode, uh, this on a single machine only will be working with uh, Hadoop cluster like it simulates the behavior of a cluster wherein name node will be working, data node will be working. On a single machine, we can see the behavior of uh, as if the data is spread across a network, as if the data is traveling from one system to the other system, you can see the simulated behavior. Because of simulation, we call this mode as pseudo distributed mode. The final one, fully distributed mode. This is the exact Hadoop cluster wherein multiple systems are connected over a network and you can see the resource manager, the name node, the data node, multiple name nodes, all the things which we learned under Hadoop architecture can be seen under fully distributed mode. So to put it together, Hadoop can run on any of these three modes. Most of the time, if you want to practice, uh, we can go for pseudo distributed mode easily. So when you are working with Hadoop, we need to make note of two major things. Whenever you want to work with uh, Hadoop file systems, that is HDFS, Hadoop distributed file system, you need to specify the HDFS with a URI, Uniform Resource Identifier. So under this URI, uh, you have to configure in the file with a property in the configuration file fs.default.name. This is a property which is to be set to the URI of the HDFS. By default, it will be Hadoop. If you see in some of the websites, you find it as Hadoop. I will be showing all the executions, whatever results that is done with the URI HDFS. So under pseudo distributed mode, if at all you are, ex you are executing on your system, the HDFS can be set to or configured to HDFS. So henceforth, for Hadoop URI, I will be using HDFS, lowercase. And whenever we are working with uh, Hadoop cluster, I told for every block of the data, it maintains three replications. The default replication factor in Hadoop is uh, three, which can be configured. You can increase it to four or five or you can reduce it to one. So, Whenever you are working on a single machine, the replication factor is set to 1 just to make sure it is not eating up the entire memory. So these are the two major things to note. Now whenever we are working with the basic file system operations, Hadoop just uh, is similar to the commands are similar to uh, Linux or Unix system commands. So if you see. Uh, percentage Hadoop. As I told, most of the online websites, they use Hadoop as the URI. We can replace it with HDFS. I just wanted to show you how you will find it on online references. So, percentage is the prompt wherein you type the command. Hadoop is the URI. You can replace it with HDFS. Hadoop FS stands for file system hyphen mkdir. So, you are trying to make a directory. The name of the directory is books and in the next one, you are find, you are giving a command percentage hadoop fs hyphen ls. ls stands for list of files. So, every command comes with a switch called hyphen in Unix. We know that the same thing is applied here also. So, you are trying to make a directory, you are trying to see the listing of the directory. As I told, because I am using the URI as HDFS, the command now changes to 
HDFS, DFS. DFS stands for distributed file system. So, instead of simply FS, you should be writing it as HDFS, DFS, MKDIR stands for make directory and whatever name you want for the directory. And similarly, this command becomes HDFS, DFS, LS stands for listing. Hyphen is default for every Linux command. So, I am not reading it. Then, whenever you give the listing, you will find something like this. Let us just elaborate this one. Whenever you are trying to see the list of files, you find something like this and this will be the output. The three lines is the output. What it says? Found two items. In the directory, it is finding two items. What are the two items it is finding? First one is this one, second one is this one. Let me talk about quickly. The first one and second one, if you see, the first letter is different. First one here is hyphen, nothing is there. First one here it is D, stands for the first one is a folder, second one is a normal file. This is how we differentiate. If the first letter is a D, you can think it as a directory. Folder can also be called as a directory. So, this is the differentiating letter. The first one is a directory, second one is a file. Later, you are finding after this first letter, you see nine letter combination which I talk about later. Then you are seeing hyphen here and you are seeing one here. This stands for replication factor. File will be replicated because this is on a pseudo distribution on a standalone machine. We are saying only one replication is maintained for every block and for directories there is no replication. Then Tom is the owner of the file or owner of the directory, supergroup, the group to which he belongs to or his login credentials belong to and next you have 0 and 119 here. This depicts the size of that particular thing. For a folder generally it will not calculate the size because it will be given in number of bytes. So, as it is for a directory, nothing will be calculated, but the files inside that will have number of bytes in that. Then date and time of latest update and what is this name of this one? Books is the folder and in that there is a file, a text file. So, whenever you try to see the listing, you are seeing whether it is a directory or a file, who is the owner, how many replication factors, to which group does the user belong to, what is the size in number of bytes, what is the time and date which when it was last accessed, whether it is what is the name of the folder or what is the name of the file. In addition to that, I told there are nine characters which talk about the permissions for the owner, the permissions for the group members to which he belongs and permissions for others. So, Unix allows you to set all these permissions. Similarly, Hadoop is also following the same thing. So, similarly, these are the permissions for the file. So, if you can quickly see, the user has read and write permissions. The third permission is execution, read, write, execution. So, if you see this file, the first three are for owner. So, the owner has read permission, write permission because it is a text file, there is no execution. That is how execution is absent. Next three are for the group members to which he belongs to. So, for group members, there is read permission, no writing and no execution. For others, read permission is there, no write and no execution. This is how we need to understand the permissions. Now, Whenever you are trying to work with the same information which I have explained so far, I have maintained what is shown in the first column, what is shown in the second column, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, etc. Then Hadoop file systems, whenever we are working with Hadoop file systems, uh, it has abstract notion of various file systems. One of them is HDFS. And Java abstract class is also there, org.apache.hadoop.fs.file system. Uh, this object or this abstract class helps us to have a client interface to a file system in Hadoop. And so many implementations are there, I will be showing. 
So, various implementations of file systems are there depending on the application, depending on, we are, uh, depending on our requirement, we can select any one of them. For a quick uh, one, I will talk about the first one or two things. As I told, I am working with HDFS implementation. How do I use that? Lower case HDFS because under Linux environment, uh, it is case sensitive. You have to use lower case which represents the Hadoop distributed file system and this is designed efficiently in conjunction with MapReduce. Similarly, there is web HDFS. If you want to work with uh, web related or HDFS over HTTP, you go for web HDFS. Secure web HDFS, this is the HTTPS version of the same HDFS. So, likewise you can find multiple implementations and abstract classes for file system access. Now, interfaces, Hadoop is because it is written in Java, most of the file interactions will happen through Java API and the shell also uses all the file system operations. The moment you execute any file system operations background, you can experience a Java program running for the corresponding one. I will show you with an example also. Similarly, HTTP, this is one of the interfaces, whatever are listed out in the table, I have just given an explanation of some of the interfaces. NFS native file system, C interface, with Hadoop you can interact with C interface also. So, this is how it is providing multiple abstract classes to work with file systems. So, these are all some more. And out of all these uh, APIs, abstract classes, we need to work with the two important classes, file system class and IO utils, which are very, very important to interact with files. Why do I say fi interacting with files? As I told, you are working with HDFS. It is the core for Hadoop to maintain Hadoop distributed file system. So, whenever you want to interact, you are working with files. So, you need to know the two important uh, classes which help us to interact with the files. The file system class coming from the package org.apache.hadoop.fs. Similarly, the IO utils package, IO utilities, input output utilities. So, the IO utils package is coming from this package org.apache.hadoop.io and which provides all the IO related like reading, writing, all such things with files. Let us discuss little bit in detail with IO utils. This is a utility class coming from this package and some of the important functions which we work as an IO operation of, of a file. So, the first one is copy bytes. How many number of bytes you want to copy? So, let us just go through this one. IO utils dot copy bytes. Input stream, you need to give an input stream object, output stream object, buffer size and boolean close. There are four parameters into this. So, I will just give you a quick one. This method copies data from one stream to the another. What do we mean by this? It will take some data from a file and copies it into another file. Now, who is the source file for us? The input stream. Whoever is specified here, whichever file name you are specifying here, that acts as the input stream, the source file. From this file, you are taking data and copying it onto the second stream, second file will be the destination file. The third one you are specifying as buffer size. At a time, how many characters should I pick from the source file and copy it onto the destination file. The last parameter is after completing copying, shall I close the file yes or no. So, that is how it is boolean. So, this method copies data from one stream to the another. The last two arguments are the buffer size used for copying and whether to close the streams when the copy is complete or not. Next one, read fully. This method reads how many bytes are we learning? You are specifying the length and off is the offset. So, from the current position or from a specific position offset, how many bytes of characters should be taken and copied or how many bytes you want to read. 
So, read fully from the file you want to take some number of characters from which current position and where should I copy it, right? Then skip fully, this is like you are positioning the file pointer and you want to skip some of the characters, you do not want to read all the characters. So, in the file how many bytes you want to skip and some more functions write fully is there and close the stream. Once you finish your work you want to close the file, so you are, you are specifying close stream. These are some of the methods available in IOUtils which will help us to interact with the file system and which will make sure we have all possible utilities to deal with file input and output on HDFS. Thank you.